Hello friends and welcome to my Black Mage guide. Black Mage is part of the caster DPS family, an advanced job to play and lacks party utility but more than makes up for it by boasting a high damage output. This guide is aimed towards fresh level 90 black mages and plays considerably different at lower levels so keep this in mind. Black mage isn't an easy job to play but this shouldn't deter you from playing the job and giving it a try as it's an extremely rewarding job and I can't recommend it enough if you're looking for challenging gameplay. The job isn't as spreadsheety as you may think either. With enough grasp on your kit, you'll learn how to handle approaching situations and be fully prepared for anything to come your way with a little know-how. And in this guide, I will teach you exactly that. First, we will go over the job gauge, resources, spells, and abilities, and how to fully utilize them. Along the way, I will provide side notes and advice to give you a better grasp of your kit. After that, a look at the basic opener and rotation, and then finish off with the stat priority. Without further delay, let's just dive right in. First, let's go over the core mechanics of Black Mage, starting with Umbral Ice and Astral Fire, both holding up to a maximum of 3 stacks and lasting 15 seconds. Umbral Ice will significantly increase your MP refresh rate and decrease the amount of damage dealt by your fire spells. At 3 stacks, spells cost 0 MP and fire spell cast times are reduced by half. Meanwhile, Astral Fire nullifies your MP refresh rate at the cost of increasing the damage dealt by your fire spells, while also increasing their MP cost and decreasing the MP cost of ice spells to zero. At 3 stacks, ice spell cast times will be reduced by half. Anokian is a buff that is simply always active while under the effect of Umbral Ice or Astral Fire, increasing your magic damage dealt by 20% and every 30 seconds of being active grants you a stack of Polyglot, holding up to 2 charges. Upon reaching 2 charges, the Polyglot timer will remain to tick, so don't let it overcap as it cannot hold up to 3 charges. You'll have a 30 second buffer to use your current 2 charges before overcapping. Polyglot grants access to Foul, a high damaging instant cast AoE global cooldown spell, on the target and this is to be used on 2 plus targets. And then we have Xenoglossy the single target alternative dealing high damage and being an instant cast GCD. These spells are unaspected so they do not benefit from the damage buff of Astral Fire nor will they refresh your Astral Fire or Umbral Ice so keep that in mind when using these spells. Enochian is a simple but extremely important buff to remain active at all times. Losing Enochian will result in losing your 20% damage buff on your next cast, dropping any remaining time on your polyglot and losing umbral ice or astral fire so avoid this at all costs to maintain enochian simply switch from astral fire to umbral ice or vice versa or make use of transpose an off global cooldown which will switch your current astral fire or umbral ice to the opposite element with one stack regardless of how many stacks of fire or ice you had before transposing a nifty tool to be used in situations where your astral fire is about to drop with no time to cast another spell to save your Enochian or to be used during downtime and making use of Umbral Soul, a GCD that will add a stack of Umbral Ice and a stack of Umbral Heart after each use. Umbral Hearts hold up to 3 charges and nullify the MP cost of fire spells caused by Astral Fire, or to be put more simply, they half the cost of fire spells while in Astral Fire and decrease the cost of Flare by one third. More on Flare later though. To acquire Umbral Hearts, simply use Umbral Soul under Umbral Ice during downtime or Blizzard 4 in Umbral Ice during uptime, a GCD spell which instantly grants free charges of Umbral Hearts. Blizzard 4 will not refresh your Umbral Ice, although this is mostly a non-issue, it is something to keep in mind. Before we move on to the rest of the spells, let's go over Paradox. Paradox is a high damaging 
unaspected single target GCD that can be cast in Umbral Ice or Astral Fire and will refresh both stacks depending on stats. While in Umbral Ice, Paradox is an instant cast, and while in Astral Fire, Paradox takes the trait from Fire 1, which is a 40% chance to proc Firestarter, lasting 30 seconds and allowing your next Fire Free to have no cast time and cost no MP. An excellent tool for mobility and to refresh your Astral Fire, or just be used to enter Astral Fire sooner. More on Fire 1 and Fire Free later. Paradox replaces Fire 1 and Blizzard 1 on your hotbar, and to acquire a cast of Paradox is rather simple. While in Umbral Ice, have free charges of Umbral Hearts going into your Astral Fire. Meanwhile, while you are in Astral Fire, simply have free stacks of fire going into Umbral Ice. You'll want to cast Paradox in every Umbral Ice and Astral Fire, and you will be ignoring Paradox in a 3 plus target situation. More on AoE later though. With all that covered, let's go over some of the basic spells, starting with the Ice spells. Blizzard 3, a single target GCD which grants 3 stacks of Umbral Ice and removes Astral Fire. Basically, your gateway spell to Umbral Ice 3 from Astral Fire 3, Blizzard 2 and High Blizzard 2. Your AoE alternative to Blizzard 3, granting 3 stacks of Umbral Ice to be used on 2 plus targets. Blizzard 1, a single target GCD which grants 1 charge of Umbral Ice and extends the duration of Umbral Ice. This isn't a spell you want to catch yourself using very often or at all unless for some reason you want to remain in Umbral Ice for 1 GCD longer. Freeze, your AoE alternative to Blizzard 4 which we did cover earlier. This grants free charges of Umbral Hearts and is to be used on 3 plus targets. Now let's move over to the Fire spells. Fire 3, a single target GCD which grants 3 stacks of Astral Fire and removes Umbral Ice. Just like with Blizzard 3, this is your gateway spell to Astral Fire 3 from Umbral Ice 3 and will serve as your opening spell in most cases. Fire 1, a single target GCD which grants 1 charge of Astral Fire and extends the duration of Astral Fire. Just like with Blizzard 1, Fire 1 isn't a spell you want to catch yourself using very often at level 90, but it can be useful in situations where you mess up and need to extend your Astral Fire at a low MP cost. Just like with Paradox, Fire 1 has the Fire Starter trait for a 40% chance the next Fire 3 will cost no MP and have an instant cast time. Fire 4, a high damaging single target GCD which does not refresh your Astral Fire. You'll want to use 3 of these before refreshing your Astral Fire with Paradox in most cases, with your first 3 gaining the benefits of Umbral Hearts after the opener. Fire 2 and High Fire 2, your AoE alternative to Fire 3 and Fire 4, granting 3 stacks of Astral Fire. This is to be used on 2 plus targets as your first cast from Umbral Ice to Astral Fire and then used only on 3 plus targets afterwards. For example, I have a 2 plus target encounter. I will start by casting a High Fire 2 as it's more potency on 2 targets over Fire 3, but once I'm in Astral Fire, I will use Fire 4 over High Fire 2 as Fire 4 is doing more potency overall on 2 plus targets. Additionally, High Fire 2 will grant the effect effect of Enhanced Flare, which increases damage dealt by Flare from 220 potency to 280 potency. Finally, we have Flare and Despair. Flare is a high damaging AoE GCD with a long cast time. Use on 2 plus targets if you have an instant OGCD like Swift Cast or Triple Cast. Swift Cast allows the next spell to be cast instantly with no cast time on a 60 second cooldown. And Triple Cast allows the next 3 spells to be cast without a cast time and holds up to 2 charges on a 60 second cooldown. Triple Cast is ideally used in the opener and re-opener, but this can be saved for high movement scenarios with a minimum potency loss if an encounter calls for it or to be used when needing to weave more OGCDs without clipping into your GCD. More on that later. Do not let triple cast sit on two charges for too long though as you want to avoid missing any usages. 
If none of these instant cast OGCDs are available, use Flare on 3 plus targets instead. Meanwhile, Despair is the single target equivalent of Flare. Both of these consume all MP and require a minimum of 800 MP to use, with the exception of Flare costing one third of your MP pool if you have any Umbral Hearts available, meaning you can cast two Flares back to back. Ideally, these two spells will always be your last GCD under Astral Fire. In the case of messing up and either not having enough time to cast these or having no swift or triple cast, you can opt in to transpose. Although it is a big potency loss, it's better than completely losing your Enochian. Thunder 3 is a single target damage over time effect GCD lasting 30 seconds and Thunder 4 is your AoE equivalent to be used on 3 plus targets and this lasts 18 seconds. You always want to have your Thunder Dot up on targets as it's a significant portion of your overall damage. These do not refresh your Umbral Ice or Astral Fire so keep that in mind as to not drop your stance when using these. Additionally, Thunder 3 has a 10% chance to proc Thunder Cloud and Thunder 4 has a 3% chance to proc thundercloud lasting 40 seconds this allows the next thunder to be cast with no cast time cost no mp and on impact deal all the damage the dot would have dealt on top of reapplying the dot again ideally after the first cast of thunder we want to rely on thundercloud to reapply our dot every time it's about to fall off or prematurely if the thundercloud proc is our only movement tool at the time thankfully we do have a tool for that sharp cast Sharpcast is an OGCD on a 30 second cooldown, holding up to two charges and will make our next Paradox, Fire 1, Thunder or Scaife instantly activate the trait attached to the spell. Oh right, Scaife. It's bad, throw this in the bin. Anyways, fine. Scaife is an instant single target GCD spell dealing 100 potency and has a 20% chance to deal 200 potency. It doesn't refresh Astral Fire or Umbral Ice and there are better alternatives for movement. I'm not joking when I say this is bad, which is a shame because the rest of Black Mage's toolkit is so finely crafted. Maybe it has some use in niche content like in the open world, deep dungeon, between dungeon pools, or even the very last GCD as a boss becomes untargetable, but overall a pretty bad spell. Anyways, back to Sharpcast. Due to its ability to instantly proc a spell's trait, it is immensely useful when used on Thunder to proc Thundercloud. Thundercloud lasts 40 seconds, while the Thunder Dot lasts 30 seconds with Thunder 3 and 18 seconds with Thunder 4, which allows you to hold onto the Thundercloud proc until you need to reapply the dot again. Overall, this is the ideal way you should be reapplying your Thundercloud Dot, but mistakes can happen or downtime messes with things, so sometimes it's needed to hard cast a Thunder. It does happen. We have a few more abilities to cover, and then before we move into the opener and rotation, I have some theory that I must cover with you, as this job does require a little of it. Worry not low, I'll make it simple. First, the two minute cooldowns. You'll want to use these pretty much off cooldown for the most part. Manaphon, an OGCD granting 3k MP. You'll want to use this inside of Astral Fire once you have casted Despair or Flare. To be able to cast another Fire 4 into Despair for single target to two plus targets, or another Flare in a three plus target situation. Or if you have an instant cast OGCD ready, like Swift Cast or Triple Cast, a Fire 4 4 into flare for 2 plus targets. Ley lines leaves a circle buff on your position that cannot be moved and lasts 30 seconds. While inside the ley lines, you are granted a 15% haste buff. Ley lines is an exception to the two minute rule. You want to use this at a point in the fight where you can get away with full uptime inside your ley lines without losing a usage. So be smart about when and where you place your ley lines. Ley lines comes with a nifty ability called between the lines. This simply rushes you back to your ley lines and this is useful when you find yourself outside of your ley lines for a cast or two. Finally, for our last two minutes, we have Amplifier. This simply grants us one stack of Polyglot, so make sure you aren't sitting on two stacks of Polyglot before using this. For our utility, we first have Mana Ward, a barrier that absorbs 30% of our total HP on a two minute cooldown. Use this during high damaging phases or to help the healers out, or to cover up for taking avoidable damage. 
Ethereal manipulation. This will rush to a target party member, not to be underestimated. This tool is incredibly handy to be used during high movement phases as you can use your party members as a taxi to get to specific spots without clipping into your GCD as much as you would have if you were to manually move with no instant casts available. Take full advantage of this ability while optimizing your damage or for convenience sake. Lastly, before we move on to the Fury, let's go over the crossroll actions, starting with Addle. Addle lowers the target's magical damage dealt by 10% and physical damage dealt by 5% on a 90 second cooldown. Great to be used on raid wides and raid busters, and your healers will definitely thank you for it. Sleep puts all targets and nearby targets to sleep for 30 seconds. This is mostly useless in high-end content as encounters are usually immune to this. It does see use in solo content low, like open world or deep dungeon, and can also be handy if the tank does in a dungeon. Lucid Dreaming. This increases MP refresh rate for 21 seconds. This is pretty much useless on Black Mage as we are not in danger of running out of MP with our Umbral Ice to Astral Fire MP loop. Shorecast allows the next spells for 6 seconds to be cast without interruption and also nullifies knockback and draw in effects. Effectively, our anti knockback. Use this when an encounter is going to knock us back so we can prevent the knockback and keep uptime. In this section, I will go over movement, OGCD weaving, dealing with downtime, recovery options while maintaining your astral fire, and the basics of single target versus AoE. Let's begin with movement. Black Mage has many tools to deal with movement, including Ethereal Manipulation, Sharp Cast for your Thunders and Firestyle procs, Xenoglossy, and Swift and Triple Cast. As a Black Mage, it is very important to know the ABC, always be casting. And this goes for these high movement phases. This will come with fight knowledge, so when you know a fight is going to force you into a movement phase, then it is important to keep these tools in mind. Firestarter can be a great tool to be used while moving during your Astral Fire phase as it refreshes your Astral Fire. Meanwhile, Xenoglossy is also a fantastic tool for moving, but remember, this will not refresh your Astral Fire, so keep this in mind as to not drop your Astral Fire while moving. Same goes for Thundercloud. As fantastic as it is, I would put Thundercloud as your very last tool to be used for movement if your Thunder Dot still has duration on it. Finally, we have Swift and Triple Cast. Ideally, I would use Triple Cast of Swift Cast as Triple Cast can hold up to two charges and it allows you to be completely unhindered by movement and continue your rotation like normal for free whole GCDs. That said, if you need four GCDs while moving, using Swift Cast on top of Triple Cast is a viable method. The only reason I put Triple Cast ahead of Swift Cast is because I probably would want to use Swift Cast when it's off cooldown, but with Triple Cast, I can hold onto it for a little longer as the two charges will not make it over cap. Hopefully this little lecture on the movement has made some sense and to give you an idea of how to handle movement phases with your tools available. Next we have OGCD weaving and as a black mage we want to avoid clipping into our GCD as much as possible. Although it can be unavoidable at times, make use of your instant casts like swift and triple cast and you can pretty much apply the same logic as movement here. If you have an instant cast available like swift or triple cast or your fire starter, thunder cloud proc or Xenoglossy, this will allow you to weave two OGCDs in a single GCD window. Otherwise, the only other way to weave OGCDs without clipping into your GCD is via Fire 3 and High Fire 2 during Umbral Ice and Blizzard 3 and High Blizzard 2 during your Astral Fire. Otherwise, you will clip your GCD. But as I said, sometimes this is unavoidable, so don't stress it too much, but just keep in mind and work on it to become better at knowing those timings. It's better to add all a raid wide that's going to kill a potential player and clip into your GCD, then not addle it and that player dying as a player dying is going to result in a greater DPS loss than you slightly clipping into your GCD. We then have downtime and how to deal with it. First, we need to know that downtime is coming so we have a game plan ready. When we know downtime is imminent, we should focus on dumping any of our polyglots with Xenoglossy, getting any final paradox casts off and spending any remaining umbral hearts and ideally ending on a despair cast before the boss becomes untargetable. Then during the downtime, we can transpose into umbral ice and use umbral soul to get us into umbral ice free, have free umbral hearts ready and a paradox ready for when the boss becomes targetable again, if time allows it. If the boss becomes untargetable during your umbral ice window and you've already casted your paradox in ice, then consider using free umbral souls to to get free umbral hearts 
transposing into astral fire transposing back into umbral ice and then casting a further two umbral souls which will end you up with two stacks of umbral ice free umbral hearts and a paradox ready to cast which will refresh your umbral ice to three stacks next we have our recovery options while maintaining astral fire an important concept to keep in mind while playing black mage there are a few ways to maintain astral fire and we have briefly touched touched up on this in the movement section, but I'd like to further explain in this section. If movement is going to force us to potentially drop our astral fire or not get as many casts off during our astral fire, then it can be a good idea to sharp cast our paradox to acquire the fire starter proc to allow us an entire GCD of movement plus a refresh on our astral fire. This is where the two charges of sharp cast come in handy. Another method is of course using swift cast or triple cast, like mentioned in the movement section. This will speed up our rotation and catch a despair with an instant cast. Due to despair refreshing astral fire, it can be wise to use swift or triple cast on it rather than manually casting it, as you can exploit the refresh when otherwise you wouldn't have had enough time to finish the cast. If none of these options are available, then using a despair early can be a good alternative and ending your fire phase early. It's better to early despair than not despair at all and go into umbral ice or drop your Enochian completely. That said, if that option is not available and as a last resort you can cast a blizzard free to go into umbral ice early as the cast is quicker than despair and as a very final resort using transpose at the very least this keeps up your enochian and will still give you a paradox cast finally we have our single target versus aoe rotations examples will be after the opener and will not include ogcds for single target our basic gcd rotation will look like this blizzard 3 into blizzard 4 into fire 3 into free fire 4s into paradox into free more fire 4s into despair and then repeat for two plus targets it'll look like this high blizzard 2 into blizzard 4 into high fire 2 into three fire fours, into paradox, into three more fire fours, and then into a despair or a foul if we have a swift cast or triple cast up. Repeat. For three plus targets, it'll look like this. High blizzard two, into freeze, into three high fire twos, into two flares. Repeat. Paradox will be ignored during three plus target situations unless we need it for the movement. And I hope I have covered as much fairy as I possibly could. There's a lot of fairy to black mage, so if you do have any fairy you would like to add, do leave it in the comments below. But with my best efforts of fairy finished, let's move on to the opener and rotation. And finally, let's talk about Black Mage's stat priority, which goes like this. Spell speed, critical hit, direct hit, slash determination. Spell speed is Black Mage's strongest stat. The reason for this is it allows the job to pump out more astral fire rotations throughout an encounter and increase comfortability with the job. Crit is still an overall good stat for Black Mages, and it's good to keep a healthy balance of direct hit and determination as well. And that will wrap this guide up. Overall, Black Mage is quite a challenging job, but being part of the ranged DPS family, you don't have to worry about much other than your rotation. I think I just heard the cries of ranged DPS telling me their role is hard. Anyways, don't overthink it and keep at it. With enough practice, you'll make a great black mage and reap the rewards. Also, if you're listening, SE, please buff black mages damage. They deserve to be top of the charts like the kings they are.
Thank you if you made it all the way to the end of the video, and if you like what you see, then make sure to give it a like. If you aren't subscribed yet and enjoy my content, then consider hitting that subscribe button for more content just like this. If you have any feedback or just how you find the job, let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to support me any further, you can follow me at the socials below. Twitch for my streaming content, Twitter for questionable tweets, and Discord for a like-minded community. Also, if you're feeling generous, you can now finally become a channel member and have your name credited at the end of the videos like this. With all that said and done, I shall see you guys in the next one. But until then, take it easy, stay safe, we out. Goodbye.